So, continuing the, uh, the lovely theme we have been developing today um, with pilgrimage and song, yeah. and, and I, over the last, well, I won't say when, uh, and uh, youth and enthusiasm, <laughs> which is very welcome in Gatekeeper. Um, I would like to um, introduce Guy Hayward and Will Parsons. Guy and Will um, have been doing some amazing work. They've, they've set up the uh, British Pilgrimage Trust, um, which is really doing fantastic work in making pilgrimage um, a, a key activity in British life again, and probably beyond Britain. Um, and um, we've, we have a feeling that, um, that the work that they're doing meshes really well with Gatekeeper. We've been doing this for a long time, um, but in a very gentle sort of gatekeepery way. And, and I'm not saying they're not gentle, but they are very dynamic, which is great. <laughs> um, so without further ado, I'd like to introduce Guy Hayward and Will Parsons to, to speak and sing about the song of British pilgrimage. Come hither, one here will constant be, come wind, come weather. There's no discouragement, shall make him once relent, his first avowed intent to be a pilgrim. Whoso beset him around with dismal stories, do but themselves confound, his strength the more is, no lion can him fright, he'll with a giant fight. But he will have the right to be a pilgrim. No hobgoblin nor foul fiend can daunt his spirit. He knows he at the end shall, shall life inherit. Then fancies fly away. He'll fear not what men say. He'll labour night and day to be a pilgrim. <laughs> Hello. 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 I'm Guy. And I'm Will. Can you hear us at the back, please? Yes. Good. So we are labouring night and day uh, to bring back pilgrimage as an acceptable thing in this country that everyone loves doing. And we hope we have a vision for the future where, people, where you ask someone, what are you doing at the weekend? They say, going on pilgrimage. What are you doing? <laughs> I think we're not far off it. <laughs> And obviously it was uh, 1538 that Henry VIII and Thomas Cromwell banned pilgrimage outright. And before that, it was Britain's and England's favourite leisure activity, the sort of thing kings and servants serfs alike. It was the one activity that tenured land workers could basically drop their shovel and go. And when the landowner said, Oi, I own you, come back. So I'm going to St Thomas of Canterbury and there's nothing you can do about it. So there was this wonderful freedom that existed. And... We believe that can return <coughs> and is returning. Well, uh, it's, it's, it's the, the, one of the ways that they got people to, to stop going on pilgrimage was to give them something else to do, and that was to read the Bible and focus on the Word and go on a journey and a pilgrimage of the mind rather than actually in the land. And we have had a lot of books published over the last 300 years since the Age of Enlightenment and since the printing press. A lot has happened. Uh, in terms of knowledge acquisition. And I think now, which it's been a sort of age of knowledge for the last 300 years, and I think now we're moving into the age of experience, and people are wanting to go back to exploring spirituality and um, our connection with the world through actually being in the world and actually doing things rather than thinking about it. Just like with Sam's Nightingale project, you know, rather than reading a book about Nightingales, people are queuing up to go out and be sh shared experience in the land, which is wonderful for us all. Um, so, there's a number of strings to the method that by which we're trying to restore, renew, renovate, bring back pilgrimage to Britain. Uh, and there's a lot we could say about that. But what we're really going to do today is actually talk about what's happened so far. Me and Guy have only known each other for two and a half years. Um, we have managed... Quite a few things we realised sitting on, in, the, in the hotel yeah. last night. Saying, what, what have we done exactly? And, uh, and it, it's quite an exciting list for us, anyway. Uh, so we'd like to walk 
through that with you and talk about some of the pilgrimages we've experimented on and some of the discoveries we've made and the songs that have guided us and focused this journey so far. So, Will, how did you get into all this? <laughs> well, guy. <laughs> when I left university, I had my final dissertation to write and I was sat on the computer saying, what is pilgrimage in Britain? You know, Google, tell me all about it. And I was getting nothing, as you don't, because the computer screen doesn't know about pilgrimage in Britain. Um, so another friend and I went for, we walked from Winchester to Canterbury. For, it was a Chaucer, Chaucer dissertation. And we got it all wrong. You know, we got, had these big, heavy bags that hurt us. Loaves of bread in, in the back, which went stale within two days. We didn't want to chew, which helped, because then you had food all the way to Canterbury. It lasted. Uh, wrong boots, terrible blisters. We got cold, wet, hungry, upset each other. You know, it all went horribly wrong. And we got to Canterbury. They wouldn't let us in. They said, there's a concert. Go away. <laughs> and we said, you know, never again. Pilgrimage. Blah. <laughs> and um, so for the next 10 years, my friend and I made long... We tried to become wandering minstrels. We did become wandering minstrels. We walked around Britain for you know, six, seven, eight, nine-month journeys on foot. Unbroken journeys. You know, not getting on a bus, not getting on a bicycle. Keeping to the, the, the journey, keeping on the line. And subsisting from traditional British folk song. Uh, Sam was a great ally in this, taught us many of our, our big hits. Uh, and we sung in high streets, you know, public houses, private houses, schools, care homes, caves, hollow trees. Just, we just sung everywhere, all the time. That's, that's what we did. And it worked. It was very good. Um, I learned a lot. And then the day came when my friend and I parted ways. And I didn't know what I was going to do next. You know, there's not, you can't really get many jobs on the back of wandering minstrelsy. It doesn't <laughs> They've done eight months, nine month walks from Canterbury to St David's and Canterbury to, to Cornwall. I mean, these were like, i have never heard of it. I mean, but we never called it pilgrimage because of that initial sort of break of the form, because we didn't understand how to do pilgrimage. We were doing these journeys and it was not pilgrimage, you know, so we, even though it's like Canterbury Cathedral to St David's Cathedral over eight months, that, we didn't call it pilgrimage, there was no pilgrimage, thank you. Even though we were going to all the holy, wholesome places en route. So it was, it was, it's been a long, slow journey till I met Guy. And while I was doing that, Guy was... I was doing a PhD in the psychology of how to build community through song all around the world. Um, so uh, I've never actually really applied my academic training to what we do, particularly. It's probably more os osmosis. But... Um, one, one of the things I got really interested in um, through was I, I met uh, a couple, Jill Purse and Rupert Sheldrake, who you probably have heard of, um, yes. and, um, and uh, Rupert introduced me to parapsychology as a field. And this is relevant because um, the, the weekend of the Song Collectors Conference that Sam uh, set up four years ago, I, Rupert said, why don't you come with me to the History of Parapsychology Conference? His sons were going to uh, Sam's sing Song Collectors Collective, and I remember standing on the train platform thinking, this is a big moment in my life. Which one do I go to? <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, I chose the History of Parapsychology Conference, which was okay. It was very interesting. Um, but then I, I sort of zoomed to Sam to have 50 minutes of hearing Freddie Black speak, and then I zoomed back to hear the rest of the Par Parapsychological Conference. And I didn't meet Will, but Merlin and Cosmo Sheldrake did, and then they invited Will and his, his partner, Ed, who he walked with, to this house where I was happy, well, I was house sitting for the Shell Drakes, and, and they had a dinner, and I met them then. So even though I missed the opportunity through not properly going to Sam's thing, I uh, was still yanked back in uh, to meet Will. And then uh, I wasn't even supposed to have dinner, I was just doing my PhD. Anyway, the point was, um, a year later, I finished it, and then I, I said to Will, Come, I'm, I really don't want to be behind a laptop screen anymore, sitting in a chair. I want to walk. It was very inspiring meeting them. And so, I mean, this, this young man you see here, when I met Guy, his eyes were sort of sunken. You know, it's, all, it's all white and puffy, and he'd just been sat at a computer for, for years. I mean, years. What, how long were you at university? Yeah, that's ridiculous. Nine years at university, yeah, and then no. obviously school from the age of four before that. So, yeah. just, just constant it's a sorry education. sight. Very and it was wonderful. So, so we, we said to each other, let's go for a walk. We didn't say let's make a pilgrimage. We hadn't made the, the conversion yet. 
Uh, and we thought, where shall we walk to? And we agreed that we would walk to the source of a song. Which Sam had given us. Yeah. Um, uh, it's a, a song about a tragedy in which 37 hot-picking gypsies... And, and Irish. And Irish. Thank you. Um, were, were swept into a river, into the uh, River Medway off Heart Lake Bridge, which was not looked after well enough, and so it was rotten, and then it sort of crumbled, and they all swept away. And there's a song written about it. It was a great tragedy because the people looking after the bridge were the Medway Navigation Trust, and they were formed of the Mayor of Tunbridge. And in those days, in eighteen in eighteen fifties, roads weren't worth toffee. If you wanted to transport goods, you did it by the river. So this was a big commercial enterprise in controlling the rivers, and they just didn't maintain the bridge. Local farmers knew the bridge was rotten, but still the the poor itinerant hop pickers were sent over it, and it broke, and it got swept away. Three generations. <coughs> in one moment. You know, one little girl lost her grandparents, parents, and siblings, just like that. And this was, a, this was very much a family ancestral um, situation, obviously, because it was families that had died. And, and we ended up in the churchyard after 70 miles of walking, and there was this couple standing in front of the monument to the, all the gypsies, and we went up to them and, said, and we said, what are you doing here? And they, and, and they said, well, we, we tried to come here, come here 10 years ago, we couldn't find it. So... We're here now, we, we're just about to go, but they're only there for about five minutes. We said, have you, have you heard the song about the tragedy? And they said, no. So we thought we were returning the song to the place, but actually, well, we were, but we were also returning it to the bloodline itself. Did you say that the, it was the ancestors? Did that come out? Really? Probably. It probably sort of didn't come out, but you probably worked. Yeah. Yeah. Sorry. Yeah. It was, uh, it was sorry, three, sorry, I've told this story many times. Sometimes I forget details. Yeah, it came out really clearly. Oh, good. Okay, okay. So it's just me well, not listening. Three sorry. of her family, this lady's family, had died in the tragedy. Wow. Um, and it was, so. you know, they had a little monument raised by public subscription, optimistically said resembling an oast house where they dry the hops. You know, about that big. So big. 100 yards away, it's Kent's tallest folly. This, this crazy big Gothic, neo-Gothic Victorian thing built on the proceeds of hop picking, built so the landowner could see, according to local legend, into the bedroom of his ex-wife. <laughs> and so there's these two, these two, you know, this glorious money thing, and these 37 people who died so that the profit could be made. Anyway, this we are now going to sing the song. Because well, that's the thing. We, we, we thought, okay, let's sing the song. Yeah, sing the song. Yeah. 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 Wait, okay. wait, just second. Okay. Wait, 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 we're waiting for an iPhone. Okay. We are? <laughs> now seven and thirty strangers are hopping, they, they had been. They were employed by Mr. Cox's, that's near old Golden Green. T'was in the parish of Hadlow, that's near old Tunbridge Town. You should have heard the screams of all those poor souls. As they were going down. Now some were men and women, and others girls and boys. They kept in contract with the bridge, but the horses they took fright. They kept in contract with the bridge, but the horses they took shy. You still can hear the screams of all those poor souls as they are going down. Now some were men and women, and others girls and boys. They were employed by Mr. Cox's, that's near old Golden Green. T'was in the parish of Hadlow, that's near old Tunbridge Town. That's where they laid all those poor souls. After they were drowned. That's an example of pilgrimage changing the song because the, the, the final couplet of the um, second verse is um, you still can hear the screams of all those poor souls as they are going down. They changed the tense. And it, it was, when we learned it from Sam, it was actually past tense. And the reason we changed it is because when we spoke to them, they said, oh, by the way, do you know that on 20th of October every year, if you go down to the bridge, 
on the wind, you can hear the screams of all the gypsies. And we, uh, and we didn't know that. So w um, also, what we didn't know is what we were doing, obviously, it was our first pilgrimage together. And so we were aiming to take the song to the bridge, to the place where it happened, thinking that, you know, we, we could help singing this song at the bridge by the river that claimed all these people. And when we got there, that was entirely wrong. We, we, under this bridge, this very strange liminal lady came along with a little dog with a muzzle that was eating all the dog food. So it was all smeared with food. She was saying, touch the dog, just give it a pat, give it a pat. Won't hurt. Uh, yeah, and Guy almost, almost, <laughs> was, you know. I was, was really scared by it, actually. I, I, I also, I literally, I, it's a strange thing to say. I, I thought it was sort of, in some way, the devil. I know that's just an awful thing to say, but, and you know, it's horrible to admit it in public, but like, I, and, and I reacted like that, and I didn't want to touch it. And it was this really a weird Wilson, that was a test, and you failed it, you know, like. Um, <laughs> no, you passed it. No, 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 no. On, on you the you day, so, oh, whatever. <laughs> <laughs> and then, uh, God, I don't remember. We pledged to throw our staffs into the river when we got there. But you know, the thing about your pilgrim staff is that you, you tap it on all the great stones, all the rocks as you go, and the trees, and, and you love it. You lean on it, it, you know, it gets a sweat of your palm, it's sort of part of the extension of your body. So we got to the river, we thought, well, let's, I think we can keep them, can't we? And as soon as we said that, Guy turned around and banged his head on the bridge. <laughs> it went. And then Will had this tripod that we were trying to set up to film us singing the song because we wanted to yeah. promote it. Uh -huh. um, and then the, one of the, 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 the legs pinged off. And, <laughs> and it was like a tripod. So it's got two legs and a staff. So, you know, the staff is being ripped away from so, it. So we cast the staff <laughs> and sung the song once more without any filming and got out from under the bridge. But it wasn't about singing under the bridge at all. I mean, as far as I can tell. No, they, they'd heard, they knew the song. It was about them. They didn't, why did, we didn't have to sing it. Um, the most important was singing it to, the to, to, to yeah. celebrate, yeah. So. so, and then afterwards we really said, well, that was a pilgrimage. We started experimenting with this form of pilgrimage to songs, and as well as traditional forms. So the next thing we did together was the North Downs Way, the classic Winchester to Canterbury. But I don't know if any of you have walked that before, it's a bit rubbish, honestly. Um, it goes by the M20 for uh, an awful lot of it. So the, the really popular road, so we put tarmac on it, and now we zoom along to Dover on the same route. You know, it's, uh, it's rather spoiled. It's the London thing has spread beyond it. Uh, not not entirely. So obviously. we changed we changed the route a bit, um, which which is something that we're keen for people to do. We have these pilgrimage routes everywhere in Britain, but these are not set routes. There is no single path to walk on. I mean that's. It sounds obvious, but maybe it isn't to everyone. No. So along, one of the things we started to experiment with was um, using a song, one single song, <coughs> we didn't know many back then, uh, to connect all of the different holy places, churches, whatever, whatever we find. Well, holy places. Well, should we, so should we boil right back to what actually, you know, what are we talking about? Yeah, we, so we're talking about pilgrimage, and by yeah. pilgrimage we have boiled down an essential definition, which is... Uh, which is very simple, very practical. We're talking about unbroken journeys on foot to holy places. Um, that means you've, you've got to walk it. It's walking. It's, yeah. it's, 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 a, it's an active principle. Um, and, and by holy places, by holy we mean from the old English halic, which means healthy, wholesome, holistic. It's uh, the root of the word hail. The Scots use hail and hearty. And it has no specific religious identity. But what we say is... You bring your own beliefs. Pilgrimage is as religious as you are. There's, it's like a, a baseline ritual practice onto which you can layer anything else you fancy. It, it works. It's like music. You don't, you know, music is not per se Christian or Buddhist or whatever. It's, it's just music, but it can be Christian music. And, and there are many different types of holy places. And just to give a small snapshot, we've got churches, chapels, cathedrals, then you've got river sources, rivers, canals. Um, holy wells, ancient trees, yews often, um, hilltops, prehistoric burial mounds. Basically, it, there are lots more. But you can, it's, it's, graves, um, the place of great happenings like battles. Uh, your ancestral graves. You know, where, where prehistoric sites, absolutely. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Um, so really, I mean, obviously, the truth is, the Holy Land of Britain is everywhere. And we just, I mean, by seeking it on foot, we create it. One creates it. We create it. Uh, although, but there are these very special places which have the memory of having been honoured deeply and continuously throughout history, and these are somehow even more special. We don't really know how that works, but uh, but it does. Should sing a song or move on. Yeah, let's sing a song. So on this North Downs way, we were singing 
this wonderful pilgrim song, because I call it pilgrim song, it started, its history begun in the British Isles, and it travelled over to America. And then it, William Walker wrote it in uh, his great book, Southern Harmony, in the shape note tradition. And now it's come back with the, the, the latest folk revival in the 60s, it's come back and it's now part of English culture again. So it's this wonderful pilgrim song, it's gone there and back again, it's come home. And we're going to sing a verse which, um, which is connected to this place called Watts Memorial Chapel. You might know it as an incredible uh, artwork that was created by the community and these amazing angels. And that's why we're going to sing this verse. Mm. Mm. Winged seraphs fly, bear the news, bear the news. Ye winged seraphs fly, bear the news. Ye winged seraphs fly, like comets in the sky, fill vast eternity with the news, with the news. Fill vast eternity with the news. <coughs> and then, <coughs> and then we, um, we went to, so we did that in every holy place, so we were connecting that song through the land. That was, that was a really good feeling, actually. Um, and then when we got to Canterbury Cathedral, they stopped the choir. This was the one where they stopped the choir, wasn't it? No, that's the, that's the next one. Sorry. When we got to Canterbury, we, we had our first proper experience of a holy world because we you know we read about them, but we had our first the Black Prince's well at Harbledown is you know the three three feathers marking it. The Black Prince requested it on his deathbed at St Nicholas Leper Hospital, and uh, you know we went along. We had a little filter because whenever you get to a holy well, there's lots of things to do, singing, making contact. But I mean, it seems obvious, but drinking the water is is primary to us. So. So, so you want to get so the point about pilgrimage is you want to get close to the holy place. Otherwise connection. you can just do it at home. But once you get there, you put your hands in to get even closer. But obviously the closest you can possibly be is that it's inside you, the water. So you have to adjust it. So. And and because we live in lowland England, you can't always trust the water, you don't know what's been buried around there. So we filter. Uh, and bless. And, and it's got a reputation for being really good for your eyes. And we'd read this in a little guidebook, you know, good for your eyes, filter the water, drink it. I couldn't see any better. You know. <laughs> um, yeah. So we sort of a little bit mystified, traipsed down to Canterbury Cathedral, got to the Christchurch gate. You know, this is what two and a half weeks of walking to get there. And this lady rushes up. She says, "Please, please, the boy has lost his glasses in the drain. You must help." And I don't know why we were chosen. So we were. So we, at that precise moment, we were this uh, incredible filmographer who's actually just been selected. Well, for, who's a military man, very, very strong. I mean, like, you know. And Will just goes, yeah, sure. Grab, grab the iron drill, pulled it back, and it once fell to him. And then, um, I don't remember it being that easy at all. But it, <laughs> well, it looked like it. <laughs> anyway, uh, and then went down, grabbed the, grabbed the glasses, and gave them to the, the boy, and he could see again. You know. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, but, um, but then my, my, the, 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 the film couldn't, like, couldn't lift it. He couldn't, he couldn't actually lift this really heavy thing. And, and, so it just shows, isn't it? Maybe that holy water, was. holy water. <laughs> <laughs> um, so we got back from that. That was uh, that was an interesting journey for us. Uh, we learned that Guy had boots that didn't fit him. Now, if you're ever going to make a pilgrimage, you get boots that fit you. Because yeah, after two weeks of him sort of hobbling along <laughs> with his you know, blisters on blisters on blisters, it was yeah. astounding. Yeah. Right? Because you really annoy the person you're with who doesn't have blisters. They have to like walk slow. But I admire it so much now because you know I know what one list is like, and you you just kept going. <laughs> you didn't quit. It's a, it, it doesn't quit. It's good. Yeah. Um, yeah. I just thought myself as stupid. But he's, <laughs> he's putting a positive spin on it. Um, but so then we then we, we moved a few months on, and we we thought right how how can we up the you know up the ante? <laughs> and we thought let's go on a longer journey from Winchester Winchester to Canterbury along. The South Downs Way and up from Eastbourne by a ride to Canterbury. Um, but it's longer, but we're also going to do it without any money. In the winter. In the winter, yeah. <laughs> uh, so in the winter, without any money, longer. And obviously that worked a treat. I mean, it was, it was amazing. <laughs> so we got to Winchester, and we I'm sure you. didn't spend a penny. 
didn't turn the page. I'm sure you know Winchester right. well, but it's got, you know, from the very start, you've got bread and ale. If you go to the, the Holy Cross, you just you have to ask. That's the rule. They have their gatekeeper, the lady, in the little thing, and she says, yeah? And you say, well, I'm here. And she says, yeah? What do you want? And you have to say, please, can I have the bread and ale? She says, yeah, it's cool. And she <laughs> slides. And, and it's the oldest charitable institution in Britain, and it's still going. You just turn up and ask. Um, and that set the tone. And then we got to Winchester Cathedral, and right underneath the high altar, in the crypt, there's an unknown holy well. There's two, actually, but there's one right underneath the altar. And we had these little straws that we were sold to us as, you know, everything you need for a water filter. <coughs> so we were drinking the water with these straws. And the next morning, you know, we were really, really ill. Right? <laughs> he was really ill. Yeah. And, then, and I thought, ha oh. No, not really, but on some level. And, uh, and then <laughs> and, and I'm all right. And then, and then you had a day of absolute, oh, it's awful. And then, then it happened to me even worse. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, and then we were just walking up and down the downs, not being able to eat any food for days. And this is right at the beginning of the journey, which we, we decided to do with no money. I'm not sure you've ever like got ill of water before, but it's... Because we're made of water, you get a bit of bad water, you just it permeates you fully. <laughs> it's, it's really horrible. It's really uh, horrible. Um, but, but, but then when, when so Radio Sussex got hold of hold of the idea that we were doing this, and then they, they we, we did an interview, and, and so we, we they said, "How's it going?" We, we told them about this water problem that in us, and they and they said, "God, that's awful." Then we spun it into this kind of yeah, but. Of course, purging is a good part of pilgrimage. Well, it is. I mean, we all know about fasting. <laughs> fasting is a well-recognised part of British spiritual traditions. You don't take the food in in order to prepare for, for ritual. But purging is, is also very well known. Not so much in Britain, but there are wells in Britain known as purging wells. Anyway, so, so, so who knows? It's, so who knows? But anyway, we got... Yeah, we, got, we, we sung another song from that journey. Yeah, that was exciting. In, in every different point. And then finally we got to Canterbury Cathedral and we met um, uh, the lady in charge of pilgrimage welcoming, uh, Canon Claire Edwards, and she, and there was the choir rehearsal going on and we said, can we sing this, this song at the, the Shrine of St Thomas? And we did. And she stopped the choir for us to sing it, which was really cool. But that's, that's, you know, that's the kind of pilgrim privilege you get. Uh, mm. you know, there's something about the fact you've done this, this, this huge journey that just opens doors. That and the song. Know. I mean, the song, by singing it in every different holy, wholesome, holistic, healthy place on the way, gains this, this manner that accumulates the journey. Really, the song was making the pilgrimage. We were just carrying it. Mm. But, uh, yeah. And it's also, there's some things... We're, so this, this song is a German song. I learnt this uh, on, on the seventh month of a, of a nine-month walk of a lady in Dartmoor whose family were in the Polish ghettos in the Second War. And they were kept alive because everything was taken from them except their, what they knew, their songs. And so they would write them down and make little books and sell the books and give little performances. And it kept their family alive when there was, there was nothing else available. And so she gave us this song, <coughs> it's in German, and it's all about, it's a Christian German Protestant song, it's all about how Mary walks through the thorn woods, and they're all just thorns, they haven't blossomed in seven years, and she walks through with Jesus beneath her heart, and they all blossom. So it's all about how pilgrimage, walking with this sense of wholesomeness, can actually change nature. But also the other thing about walking, we're singing a song in all these different places. We're not actually singing it to kind of an audience. Oh yeah, like, no, no, no one ever listens. The, the, the land listens. You yeah. Know, yeah. Like, and yeah, we do feel that you know that is that's what it's for. And it's not for us in a way. It is for us as well, but not for humans. Not for humans. Um, and so it kind of it's had it's had this really unusual loads and loads of different audiences, mm. um, and it so it picks up this mm. charge. I think. So. Mm. Anyway, right, Maria. Maria, du kein Don Wald ging, Kurieleison. Maria, du kein Don Wald ging, der hat in sieben Jahren kein Lauf getragen. 
Jesus und Maria. Was trug Maria unter ihrem Herzen, Kyrie eleison, ein kleines Kindlein ohne Schmerzen, das trug Maria unter ihrem Herzen, Jesus und Maria. Da haben die Dornen Rosen getragen, Kyrie eleison, als das Kindlein durch den Wald getragen, da haben die Dornen Rosen getragen, Jesus und Maria. So that's the song in, in honor of Maria and what she carried um, for, for, you know, the Queen. It's the Queen of, she's the Queen of Heaven. It's, she's a very powerful figure in many people's imagination and so much so that a lot of the churches in Britain are St. Mary's. Like it's just, you see it all the, all the time. So we sing, that, we sing that song and another, which we may sing later if we've got time, um, in Mary churches. Um, uh, you know, we try to link the song to the place, you know, not just make it kind of random, oh, it's a nice song, I know. It's just, just try this. Well, let's jump straight to Magna Carta now. Okay. Okay, so in June 2015 was the... Queen, the isn't there? It's the Walsingham, but yeah. You will get to go back to that. Uh, was the uh, the anniversary? Which anniversary was it? Eight hundred. Eight hundred. Yeah, of, of Magna Carta. So we walked from the London Stone, which is the the druidic central pivot of the whole city of London. Uh, it has a uh, endless history. You know, it's now like Little Stone. All that's left, it got bombed, and it's like behind W. H. Smith, behind Perspex. But it's still there. They say when it goes, London falls. Uh, it's still there. And so we walked from there to Anchorwick, in Runnymede, where the Great Charter was sealed by John and the Rebel Baron. And it was, what, a five-day five three day day, walk? Three-day walk. Three-day walk. Three-day walk. Yeah. Yeah. Five. Um, and it's th to this incredible yew tree, the Anchorwick yew, and it probably was the safe place when uh, John was signing the, the Charter, and not many people talk about it. You know, Obama as the Bath ambassador and all the other big... You know, Royal celebrations were going on the other side of this, ri this river, but we actually reckon that it probably would have been signed by by the yew tree with this monastery nearby. It had a, it had a little convent just by it, and if you were on, on that side of the river, you had wooded hills, which were perfect for ambush. And this was a wartime, you know, the king and the barons were looking for any advantage they could get, and if that meant you know, slaying one another, they, they would do that. So we think it was a more likely place for the charter. And we took a song with us that was from... It was contemporary. More binding, I think, on a spiritual level. Yeah, that too. Yeah. I don't think it's just... No, no, not just, of course. Yeah. Um, Practical spirituality. Yeah. Um, and we took a song with us that was contemporary with, was older than Magna Carta, which was uh, written by, not written at all, it was a saint called Godric, who was a, a hermit, merchant, short, ginger, famously strong man, who became this, he holed himself up in Finchale in Yorkshire as a hermit. And while he was there, he had lots of dreams of the Virgin Mary who came and gave him songs. And a monk called Reginald wrote them down. And these are now the oldest songs with words and music we have in Britain. Written together, written songs anyway. Uh, dating from around 1150. <coughs> in Old English, not Latin. Old, yeah, old English, that's what the language is. And um, it's a song for protection. So you, it's quite a good one yeah. mm. for that. Yeah. And um, you sing it. Yeah, sing it. Right. Sainte Marie, Virgin, Mother Jesu Christes, Nazarene, on for shield, health in God rich, on fanga, bring helice with her in God's riche. Sainte Marie, Christus born, my Dennis Clenhard, 
Moderes flotili min sinne, rex in min mod, ring me to winne, with their in self Another journey we made, because which, which, we've got 20 minutes, so which one should we do? Let's, let's go to Tyvee in Jerusalem, and then we'll talk actually what, what we're doing with the journey. Okay, fine. Okay. Um, so there have been lots of little pilgrimages we've made over the last two and a half years. we try to sort of crown them in whenever the space. We both have other things we do as well, but you know, it seems to be time stretches with pilgrimage. And we find that if you want to dedicate time, although it's a sacrifice, giving two weeks or a week or even a weekend, somehow... The space is made. Once you set the intention, once you say, I'm going to do that, everything else orders itself and it becomes possible. Mm. Um, this is Sam. Um, Sam. Sam came with us uh, last mid, uh, midwinter just gone. Mm. And we did a four-day journey because Sam's a busy man. So uh, it, it's not just because of him, but it, there was a sort of constraint on the time. It's a busy time of year. Um, and we walked from Salisbury to Winchester and we sang a song about uh, how, well, it's very much at the time of year. So there's this, there's this thing about singing a song to the land in the right way, the, the right particular kind of context of the song fitting with the place. And then there's all that space, that the space part dealt with, place part. But then time, the time's another aspect of like when to sing a song. It's not just about where, but when. And, and this song was about sort of midwinter time, welcoming in the new year. Come on, Sam, let's sing it with us, would you? Can, can you remember? Yeah. It's been a year, but I'm come sure it's still there. Sorry. Yeah, sorry. I've got to have a surprise for you, sir. I've got the picture, right? Oh, the lyrics, yeah, yeah, that's the yeah. Yeah. Okay. Is that okay? Yeah. yeah. You get a bit of bonus yeah. sound, yeah. you see. I'll give that a bit of I'll put that thing around technology. Yeah, yeah, okay. The moon shines bright and the stars give a light. In a little while it will be day. Our Lord, our God, He calls upon us all and bids us awake and pray. Awake, awake, good people, awake on this Christmas holiday. For it might be better for your poor soul when your body lies under cold clay. No, the life of a man, it is but a span, and he flourishes like a flower. For he's here today, tomorrow he's gone. And dead all in an hour. Now the clock strikes one, it's time to be gone, no longer to tarry here. God bless you all, both great and small, and send you a happy new year. God bless you all, both great and small, and send you a happy new year. <laughs> so, so I, 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 I just do know, I'll just say that, this, this, for me it was a really fun thing. In the middle of the night, when solstice happened, winter solstice, at about, I will be, we worked out it was going to be 4.47, so I turned on my alarm for seven minutes before that, and I got out, and I, it was really cold, got out, and I put my head, my forehead against this massive tree that we were, this kind of crazy <laughs> Beach tree, and I, I had my forehead against it when the solstice went past. Recommend it. <laughs> <laughs> That's all I'm going to say. <laughs> You're going to say more than that. Yeah. Um, uh, okay, okay, so we just jumped in. I was moaning a lot when that alarm clock went off. You were, weren't you? Everyone was against me. Everyone was against me. Quite right, too. I mean, it's, 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 it's not, not a great time to get up. Um, so something else we've experimented with over the last year has been river pilgrimages. We gave a lecture down in Cardigan, and it was all called the Do Lectures. 
And we thought, uh, you know, what, we, we can't just turn up in a taxi and talk about doing pilgrimage. It would be maddened. <laughs> so it's right on the River Tavy, which the source is up in uh, the foot of the Cambrians. And so we, so we followed, followed her down, um, singing this... It's uh, this quite an incredible about, Welsh song about goats. About multicoloured goats. Yeah, multicoloured um, goats. And <laughs> it's a sort of nursery line that no one understands, and as all good nursery lines are. But the, the wonderful um, thing about this is, you know, take these, taking traditional <laughs> local song on a pilgrimage, it is a key to the people you meet, the landscape. You, you, say, you say to people, you know, we're making a pilgrimage, you say, oh yeah, so we've got a song. They say, oh yeah, and you sing the song, and suddenly people join in, and you know, the drinks flow and the stories come out. And yeah, no, it's a, it, it's as Sam was saying, you know, once you sing the song, it, to the, the, the right song to the right people, they, it, it, these are sort of energetic exchange completely opens up and then you get all the best, you get the really good talk, the conversation. But before that, they just think you're who are these guys? So good fitting good. boots, a uh, proper water filter and a local song, you know. <laughs> that's the toolkit. That's <laughs> um, so, so, so she gets to it so when do you go bink? Yeah. Start with when and do the whole thing. Mm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, bink, bink, di, go. Bink, go, di. Bink, go, di. Okay. It's in, it's in Welsh. It's in Kamwari. Okay. Um, and we're not Welsh speakers. Uh, well, we've got Welsh grandfathers. Little Welsh. Yeah. Yeah. Ois gavreto, ois hebe gudro, ar a clegi a gewn mai, han a brun crue gro. Gavo when 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 ye vin when vin when vin when well the fun when well the fun when was this when up and fall when 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 ois gavreto ois hebe gudro ar a creg ye gewn mai han a brun cruedro gavo pink 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 ye vin pink 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 well the fun pink well the fun pink was this pink up and fall Bink, 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 gava go, 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 yay, bink, go, bink, go, bink, go, well, the bong, go, well, the bong, go, what's this go, hop and fawn, go, 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 gava di, 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 yay, bink, di, bink, di, bink, di, well, the bong, di, well, the bong, di, what's this, di, up and fawn, di, 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 gava, when, 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 yay, bink, when, 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 well, the bong, 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 well, Bink means pink goats, uh, goth means blue goats, D means black goats, and when is the white goat. Um, so now you know. I'm not sure what the rest of No, no, well, but that was, uh, oh, what was good about that pilgrimage is, you know, we had our intention, we're going to get to these lectures and give a lecture, we're going to follow the river, drink lots of water, bathe a lot in the river, and it works very well, following the river. Human culture yeah. and diversity uh, follows the path. You know. And also, it's a river pilgrimage. I think, I think, my personal opinion are the kind of archetype fundamental pilgrimages because that you start at the source at the top, maybe in a mountain, and it's very mm. pure water, and it's a very, it's a little trickle, but very, very pure, um, like like a, like a newborn baby, like a birth, uh, like a birth. And then as you go down the river. Water joins it. We like in life, you know, you have more influences from different people, not just your family, but and then you go further, and then you adolescence, and it, it starts to get more complicated. And the great towns and, and things, things happen, like landmarks in your life. And then when you finally get to the end, it's like it's so complicated the water by that point. There's just so many different types of water. It's not pure spring water anymore, but it's big and it's huge and it's sparse. And then the biggest moment of all is it goes into the sea, and then you're just like completely joined the oceanic whatever. The oneness. As a oneness. And that's basically what happened to us. Um, and so by walking it, you basically walk life. And it's a really powerful thing to do. And then obviously the good thing about rivers is they're often flat, so it's good walking. And, and there are often settlements along it because people settled near rivers. So they kind of, they've got a lot going for them, rivers. It's true. Um, I was going to talk about the harps. Should we leave the harps out of it? Um, uh, well, okay, there's uh, one of the things we found on this pilgrimage, we know we went to deliver a message about the British Pilgrimage Trust, what we're trying to do, pilgrimage, the river. But it turned out that wasn't the message we had to deliver at all. We, um, we were by a war memorial, singing a little song by a war memorial, and this car pulled up, screeched to a stop, and said, Oh, lads, it's you two, what are you doing here? And I last saw you 
Sam Lee gig. Sam Lee gig, yeah. I didn't recognise him, actually. Some random chap from London who... Owen Shear. Yeah. Who's, you know, if you think about the river of life or whether the journey of every day, so we've been walking for five, four days to get to this spot. He's driven from somewhere else. And, you know, I know it's like trite to say coincidence, but it, it's a wonderful confirmation that you're in exactly the right place at exactly the right time. And Pilgrimage does that a lot, as I'm sure you know. Um, so anyway, his father had a harp workshop. And it turns out he's the last man in Western Europe who can build a harp entirely by hand. His name is Alan Shears. And he spent 37 years developing semitones on harps. And a harp is the second oldest <coughs> instrument after the drum, and there's never been an effective way to have a semitone control which doesn't lose sonic quality. And he said, you know, 37 years ago, he sat in the car with, on his honeymoon with his wife driving. She said, Alan, what are you thinking about? He said, semitone. <laughs> <laughs> and 37 years later, he did it. He's now, and he made it. But because they didn't have a lot of money, they couldn't patent it. So he... 150,000, I think, to pay something like that. So this great discovery, this life's work, he had to basically manufacture and put out, and now everyone's copied it. And it's free for the Russian harps, the Canadian harps, the American harps, they all do it. And, and basically now he's, he's in a situation where it's like he doesn't know whether it can carry on. And, and we, he was very nervous about telling that. Oh, by the way, his son had said, you must come to my father's workshop. So he walked. And so he got taken around this amazing way, and he finally just opened up and said this thing. And his son said, he's never told anyone that, that we're in mm. this situation. Anyway, um, on the final day of the, this do lectures, all these like, really high-powered businessmen were at, and business women, and, and just uh, lots of energy, creative energy, lots of influence and all this kind of thing. And they had a, day, a, a, a moment where you could go on an open mic and just say what you're feeling. So we just said, can anyone sort out this, 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 this is a harp issue only just up the river? Um, can anyone sort out? And this guy came up to us and said, yeah, I know the, the Welsh secretary, um, this guy has just got a really successful businessman, got hundreds of millions, and we were like, okay. And Bryn Terfel. Bryn Terfel, he just knew everyone. And, and so he's actually, you know, it's been, anyway. It's, it's, it's happening. The hearts will be saved. It, it's good. Yeah. Yeah, um, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. But it's, it's pilgrimage, that's what did it. Um, yeah, pilgrimage did it. <laughs> and um, our most recent journey together um, was, it was 100 years ago, I'm just jumping now because time is time. Is time. Uh, 100 years ago, Hubert Parry took William Blake's poem, the prologue to uh, Milton, which we call Jerusalem, and he set it to music. And to honour that, because it, it was back in March, the actual moment of the anniversary, but in the pre brexit you know, are we British, are we European? No one was talking about being English. And it kind of got missed. A few people sung it. I think it was a little WI sing song. It, things happened, but nothing much. <laughs> <laughs> and as I'm sure you know, one of the best, way to, best ways to honour something is by making a pilgrimage for it. Um, and so that's what we set out to do. And uh, so we walked from central London, where both William Blake and Hubert Parry lived most of their lives, uh, where Blake was born and died, and, and yet both of these men, you know, pretty much lived in London their whole lives, but they're both drawn to Sussex, the coast of Sussex, 130 miles south. Only six miles apart, or 130 years apart, 112 years apart, six miles apart to write Blake the lyrics and Parry the music. For one of England's most enduring, popular and multifaceted songs, I mean, it's used for everything from the sort of far-right nationalism to jam sales and uh, rugby matches and school children. But it had been commissioned by the Propaganda Bureau um, in 1916 to get men to go to the front. And um, Parry was actually sort of involved in that um, what's fight for right campaign. He was yeah. involved. But then once he saw what he'd done, or well, what not what he'd done. You're making this up, that's not true. That's not what's true, because what then happened was the conscription happened. Yeah, it, it was, and then, people yeah. had to sign up, they were dropping like flies, like pebbles on the beach, as, as, as contemporary eyewitnesses said, so the government needed soldiers, so they wanted to write a rousing song to get the men to, to fight, and Jerusalem was that. But in March 1916, the government passed that all single men between 18 and 40 would be conscripted. And then in May 1916, they said all married men have to go too. So the song wasn't needed because the government just <coughs> shut, took everyone to the front lines to die. And then Parry pulled it from that campaign and then gave it to the National, National Union, Union for Suffragette. Women's Suffrage Society. Suffrage. Suffrage. Yeah. Yeah. So the, the, the um, vote for women movement. Not the military, the militant suffragettes, but the sort of 
their legalistic cousins. It was a tag team effort, suffrage, and uh, you know, some people were saying laws, some people were saying, you know, do it the hunger strike way, and they worked together. And by, what, 1928, that came through, the, the universal suffrage, and so the song was then given to WI, which is, to, they had it till 67, and now it's out of copyright and everyone can sing it. So that was our pilgrimage to Jerusalem, and... We also brought gosh, it, what, what, what it brings, say about that? Well, what we thought we were doing was Jerusalem, honouring Blake, the creativity of this um, incredible English national anthem, two, two important men in our uh, culture. Um, but what we realised, we're passing these war memorials along the route. Fine, great. <laughs> war memorials along the route, and so we sang another song, My Boy Jack, uh, a, a, a folk song, uh, Peter Bellamy folk song setting of the poem My Boy Jack. We're not going to go to that one. We're not going to go to that one. I just want to say the enduring image of this 13 days of walking from London, central London, it was horrible to walk out of London because the edges are just, you know, industrial, it's not so nice. Um, but the enduring image for me was we went to Cobham Mau Mausoleum where Robert McAlpine, Concrete Bob, as they call him, he's buried. We went there because we were looking at how people build in Jerusalem, their idea of Jerusalem, you know, this heaven on earth in England. And he was one of the great builders of the 20th century, he was a slap in concrete. So we went to go and sort of, to some degree, honour him and uh, spend a bit of time there. And what we saw were swarms of ladybirds, you know, the little black ones with the red dots and the little red ones with the black dots. And his gardener was there saying, oh, what you've got to do is kill all the black ones because they eat the other ones. So you've got to kill them, they're the bad guys. And for the red ones, the good ones, they're native. And it just reminded us so strongly of, of the First World War, of these crowds of young men. That would have been the, the logic, wouldn't it? That they're going to come and kill us, so we've got to kill them. And they look so similar, but, and yet somehow there's a story that they're the bad ones, we have to kill them, and they're the good ones. And yet, you probably couldn't tell the difference from 50 yards away, apart from the hat shape, the uniform. So, Are we going to see Jerusalem? Yeah. 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 So we've got a we've got a particular <laughs> setting. Yeah, it's, it's, we're not going to sing it in a it's a strange way. We sing it as though we're in su sat in different rooms at different periods. It's out of time with each other. You might not like it. I'm sorry. Um, <laughs> should we try it? Mm. And did those feet in ancient time? Walk upon England's mountains green. And was the holy Lamb of God On England's pleasant pastures seen? And did the countenance divine Shine forth upon our clouded hills? And was Jerusalem builded here Among these dark satanic mills? Bring me my bow of burning gold, Bring me my arrows of desire, Bring me my spear, all oh, clouds unfold, Bring me my chariot of fire. I will not cease from mental fight, Nor shall my sword sleep in my hand, Till we have built Jerusalem In England's green and pleasant. We've got, we got some two or three minutes, and we're just going to actually wrap up through what we're trying to do. Basically, we are the British Pilgrimage Trust. We have a bunch of really interesting trustees and advisors. Peter Owen Jones, Satish Kumar, Duchess of Norfolk, uh, Viscount Lord, Robin Bridgman. Some interesting people um, from all sorts of walks. Jill Perth. Um, and we are trying to create more Rupert Sheldon, of course. Yeah. Trying to create pilgrimage here, now. The, the simple act of journeying on foot to holy places. We're doing that through three main ways. One, we're trying to create a long-distance route from Canterbury to Cornwall, a South British way, which is very interesting. We'll talk about it later. If you want to talk about that, we'd love to talk about that. Um, we are also well, creating a 
accommodation networks within rural churches because there's not really a use for them, they're not generating any money, a lot of these churches are basically being retreated from and they're all empty at night and this is the place for pilgrims to sleep. I don't know if you ever slept in a church but whatever your objections are, and a lot of people have objections, they fade away as you sleep and they're not there when you wake and they're the most astonishing places simply on the merit of what's happened in them. The communities who greet the births, who celebrate their marriages and bid farewell to the, the, the dead. And these are incredibly important places in our community landscape and a great place to sleep on pilgrimage. Um, if anyone's got access to any churches, let us know because we need more of them to say, you can sleep here. Um, um, and, and just in general... Um, the map. Well, the, 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 this pilgrim, pilgrimage is having a resurgence. You're probably noticing this in national consciousness. Um, but... Uh, the, the routes, there are lots of routes, but they're not built around accommodation, so they kind of they don't really work really, unless you've got a lot of money to spend 50 quid a night on B&B. Um, so we do need to rethink the way how we approach the land and how we approach t tourism and like walking through it. It's, this is not tourism. This is allowing p everyone to do it. You know, from king to call centre worker. Um, this is, a, is, a, this is a, you've got a, you've got everyone should be able to do this. Should be a right. Um, and to make it a right, you've got to make low-cost accommodation everywhere. So that's a really big project, and we're trying to focus it along this Canterbury, uh, Cornwall to Canterbury route to make it sort of manageable to begin with. But hopefully, eventually, all over Britain, seven to seven to ten miles apart, there will be churches you can sleep in, or hostels, or farmhouse bunk beds, or just, just we'll have a pilgrimage infrastructure like they do in France and Spain, and like we used to have in Britain. And the third string of what we're attempting to do is to create a holy place map of Britain and a pilgrim support venue. So a user-generated, ordnance survey based, but like totally reskinned map that sort of shows footpaths are much bigger, motorways are much smaller, um, <laughs> you know, the rivers are the big things. It, yeah. a, a, a map that shows the landscape as it is to encourage pilgrimage. And user-generated, just to translate, is means that people can... You. Up, you, you could go and find a holy place Say where you, where you are on your phone, a pin, uh, it's GPS coordinates, take a photo, write some stuff, and upload it onto this map so everyone in Britain can do this. In order to detoxify the idea of a holy place, because people have this sort of holy, the word holy, it, it comes with allergies. People don't really, a lot of people don't want to deal with it. But obviously, you know, if you reject the idea of holiness because the word is semantic reasoning, then, then we're all in great trouble, you know, if that happens. So where do we go from there? So we're trying to open up the concept Make more young people get involved. Bring your own beliefs is our sort of catchphrase. Uh, open, <laughs> BYB, and, and open to all. That's not just open to all faiths, but hopefully people are open to the all. Um, and um, yeah, just it's like a fair trade label. You know, a church can put and say we are like fair trade church. We are bring your own beliefs church. You know, because we have to change this. We have to change people's people's approach to this. They have to feel like they're welcome. I think that a lot of people don't feel they're welcome. This religion basically should mean re-legion, should mean re-manying, you know, undoing separation, bringing us all together so we have our spiritual pursuits, but we do it in community so we can watch over one another, help one another, do it together. It doesn't really mean that. It really means promoting exclusivity and tribalism. And we're hoping that pilgrimage can be the great bridge that reopens this, allows people to practice spirituality in the land together side by side, whatever faith, background, or non-faith they come from. And that's something we're trying to make real today. And that's, that's really it, probably, for me. And if, if, any, if any of you have, I'm sure, incredible deep knowledge that you can say, well, there's this great place, or this, that you should know about this, or you should, that would be wonderful. We have a website, britishpilgrimage.org. Well done. You can subscribe to our newsletter, which tells you about pilgrimages that we organise, that you can come on weekend ones, and also... There's a little contact form where you can let us know about your knowledge because, <coughs> you know, we are we are but young and 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 we don't have we don't have a, a sort of breadth and depth that um, so many of you combined do and so we can work together. Hopefully. Is there a goodbye song? Um, Total love. Uh, one verse. Do one verse. Okay. One verse. Fare you well, my dear, I must be gone and leave you for a while. If I go away, I'll come back again, 
Though I roam ten thousand miles, my dear, though I roam ten thousand miles. Thank you both. That was absolutely awesome. You're an amazing double act, by the way. <laughs> Definitely go on the stage. Um, the, and the work you're doing is so important, and, and you know, it does fit so well with Gatekeeper Trust.